There we go. Hey. Oh, man. All right, let me see if I can bring this down. Get situated. Way late. Way, way late. Okay. So, jeez. All right. So, my eight-hour workday, my freelance job, ended up turning into ten hours. So that went crazy on me. Got here at the uh, Blue Screen Gaming, forgot my second monitor, and could not get Streamlabs to actually move back to my primary monitor. So I've spent 30 minutes just trying to get that working. So I am not even close to being set up here, but I'm working on it. Okay. What's up, folks? So we're back at Monday, and I actually had some stuff to show. <laughs> I had made some progress over the weekend, but I'm having one heck of a slow start. Okay. So let me try and bring some stuff up here. Let me get my Unity fired up. Oh man. Just needed like to slow time down for like 20 minutes just so I could actually get all this right. Okay. Ba -boom. That should be correct. Move this over. Yeah, jeez, I can't even tell if that's gonna be in the way or out of the way. All right, I'll wait for that to come up. What's going on, folks? So, total madness, total mayhem. A uh, ten-hour workday. <sighs> to raced over here with like six minutes, eight minutes to spare. Try to get set up. But um, so yeah, I, I got some time in over the weekend. I was able to figure out if you guys remember the last thing I was playing with was trying to get the uh, mascots to load up correctly. And I, in theory, in theory, I've got that worked out. Um, the problem was is where I'm staying, I have no, literally have no internet there. So I was doing it as an offline test. So once I actually do the uh, online test, <laughs> it may still crash and burn, but getting closer. So um, let me see. Let me move this over. Maybe. All right. Let me drop that there. Let me see what we got here. Let me see where the edge of my screen is. There we go. Okay. Good. We're getting a little closer here. <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay. Boom. <sighs> okay. Mm. All right. So I'll put up a notice later on, but um, just let you guys know, uh, I will not be doing a broadcast on Wednesday. Because I will be on an airplane heading back home for Thanksgiving. So I will not be able to do the broadcast because literally 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, I will be rushing to the airport to deal with the madness that is Thanksgiving travel. But um, I will be back on Friday. If everything goes well, I'll be back home, back working on my machine, which means that I will be susceptible to freezing and crashing again. Yay! You know, but at least I'll have my stuff set up, so that's that's kind of an improvement. But uh, oh well. All right. So yeah, what what kind of happening here for a Monday night? The place is kind of jumping, but that's all right. Let me see. Okay, so I got this. Do the test. There we go. There. So that's cool. So now it it looks like it's just the regular default guys, but oh, and it's gonna chew here for a second because I'm actually working off of my thumb drive, my little USB memory stick, so that's why it's kind of going nuts there. Um, but uh, that may actually cache, so it may not be as bad the second go around. Alright. So the cool thing is, the deceptive thing, is that it looks like it's just the regular two guys. But what I did was uh, on the, the version I was working on, I hadn't gotten the guys, uh, the other mascots implemented in that version. So I kind of a step back because if you guys remember I did plug in those other characters uh, at least somewhat but um, what I ended up doing was just taking that base guy and cloning him. So if you see if you click on him come over here we'll see that he is uh, he's one and let's see Boom. and he is number f mascot number four. So I do actually have it 
randomly just randomly choosing between the five mascots, one to five, which right now, as I said, these are all just the same cloned ones, right, one through five. But the cool thing is, you know, the code is working, right? It's actually pulling in uh, dynamically the, uh, the, the, which the correct character that you're choosing as your mascot character. So that at least is an improvement. Uh, I found the, the part of the code where it, it does the initial uh, back and forth between the, uh, the multiplayer and it now actually having it transfer uh, the base information along with the, uh, the type, of type of mascot they're playing with. So that's good. So just out of curiosity, this may, no, this will probably blow up, but I'm curious if I try and do an online version and see if that actually comes up without crashing. Because once again, I was, the, when I was working on this over the weekend, I, I had no internet, so I was not able to test the online version. So let's see, do online. I have to give myself some more coins here in a second. Searching. Let's see. See if it does it. Fingers crossed. Hey. Wow. Cool. Okay. Wait. Actually, let me pause that. I hit pause. What the? Okay. And uh, mascot one is probably going to be both of mascot. Oh, it actually did. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, it's still doing the random load on that, but that's good. I actually didn't think that would work. That actually did. That's kind of cool. Okay. So what I need to do is come back. And I'm going to go online real quick into my online database so I can give myself more coins because I'm down to my 100 there. Which is interesting. It didn't deduct. Huh. Okay. Did it just not refresh or did it not deduct the money? Uh-oh. Did I just discover a bug there? Let's see. Let me go 52. There we go. Let's see what it says. No, it's still 100. It should have actually deducted that. I mean, I'm glad it didn't, but let me, let's see, it's uh, guess 1218. So, got the client users. So I'm just going online real quick, doing it on my phone. <laughs> Uh, so it's 12:18. So let me go in there. This would be guest underscore 12:18. Yep. Do a search. There we go. I found me. And edit it. And then we'll come over to data. And right now it shows. I have 100 coins, and I'm just going to go nuts. I'm going to give myself 5,000, so I don't have to worry about running out. 5,000. Save. It's good to have keys to the keys to the kingdom there. Cool. All right. So now if I refresh it, easiest way is just turn it off and on again. I should pop up and it have myself 5,000 coins at the waiting. There you go, 5,000, good. All right, so I'm gonna play through a game here real quick and uh, see if I can do a 25 coin match, beat this guy real fast, and then see if uh, it I actually get the, the credits. If not, then it's not. Let's see. I mean, at least, because I quit the match, it should have at least deducted the coins from me, which is scary that I didn't see that happen. I may have broken something over the weekend. Although I don't think I was playing with the, the cash stuff, so that seems unlikely, but we'll find out. Oh, I forgot. Let me put him to sleep. Boom, one shot. Look at that. There you go. Oh. There he goes. That's there. Oop, I'm off. There you go. All right, almost done. No. Uh-oh. Can I do it before he hits the stop? Uh-oh, this is going to get close. Got it. Ooh, that was that was close. All right, I'll be uh, I'll be respectful. Oh. Wow, that's a glitch. It didn't actually go into the uh response. 
Huh. Oh, you know what? I think because I did a rename. Yeah, I did a rename. So it was looking for what I used to call the character before was the verses, and it should be looking for the, the mascot uh, character. So there you go. There's something to fix, but it's good that I actually went through. So I got 25 coins, so I should be at 5,025, 26. Oh, because I had that one-point bonus. It's weird, but it showed 25. Oh, man. Looks like I'm finding bugs all over the place here. Seems like the screen did show 25 with... Oh, no. The destruction was the one-point bonus, so that was 26. Good. So that's not broken. Okay. But let me bring this up. Pause the game here. Let's stop it, rather. What's going on? Okay. Let's see. Yeah. So it's I had it hard coded before. So what I need to do is find that's gonna be a mascot. So he should be parented to the versus island rotator red mascot position. So if I find that, and I could probably just uh, just reach it that way. So uh, yeah, versus blue script. Yeah, it's never gonna find that. Uh, because once again, I did. So this is kind of bite me because I'm just referencing the script to a a, a, a hard coded uh, villager, the the mascot that I had before. But now that I'm doing it dynamically, I need these variables to get loaded up at runtime. So let me see if I go. So where should I? I have to think about when I want the uh, game controller to actually grab that. Um, Versus blue versus red. Okay, let's try this. Um, once the once the uh, challenge menu is displayed, I should be able to get at it with no problem. So, okay, I'm gonna make a uh, new function here. Find mascots. There he goes. All right. So I'm going to do that, but I'm going to hold off and not do that until the game actually starts. So we we'll say uh, start online game. Hey, first time here. Uh, which Barry Allen for Flash did you animate? Um, uh, which Barry Allen? It's um, well. I mean, it, uh, if you're talking about which episode, it was uh, the second half of season three. Uh, the episodes were well. No, actually, sorry. There's two different times. Uh, season one. Uh, I also worked for the company I'm working for right now over in Culver City. There was the the first Flash Arrow crossover episode. So if you watch the demo reel, which is uh, kind of the 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 old version. Uh, that one actually is the the Barry Allen from the first crossover episode. So that was like I think that was uh, uh, season two, I think, or se in the season one or season two, the the first crossover episode. But I'll tell you what, if you give me a second, I'll try and dig up the uh, I have like a little hidden one. Um, let me see if I can find it real quick. Actually, I should do it on my my laptop here. Once again, I'm didn't bring my second monitor, so I'm kind of like playing at a disadvantage here tonight in terms of my setup, but bear with me one second. I'm going to see if I can find uh, YouTube. See if I can find the other video where I have all the stuff I worked on. Um, yeah, so if you watch the stuff that's in the... the I, I'm, I'm assuming you looked at my demo reel that I posted a while back. Uh, the stuff there is like when he runs into the bank, all that. That was part of that, that crossover episode but um, I also worked on like I said the second half of season three I'll see if I can drag it up here I think I have it 
online just kind of tucked away. I thought I did. Hmm. Maybe I don't. Okay. Uh, I'll have to put it online. So, uh, n I don't have the video on my YouTube. I thought I actually had it just as an unlisted. But, um, so th there's a, a handful of episodes that I did for season, uh, the second half of season three. So, like the Gorilla City sequence, uh, there's a few episodes in there. Um, you know, there's an alleyway shot with a motorcycle. Uh, he and Kid Flash are chasing down a motorcycle guy. So, so technically a little bit from the first uh, Arrow Flash crossover and then uh, a bunch of stuff in uh, the second half of season three. So, hope that answers the, the question. Um, let's see. You know what? Actually, maybe I have it. I might get sneaky here. Um, I might have it on my desktop. Give me one second. I'll see if I can dig it up. If you're curious, let's see. Or, or maybe you know, maybe I might even have it on my thumb drive. Less likely, but we'll see. Um, boom. So, you know, Comic Con demos. Nope, it's not there. Uh, hmm. Okay, I don't. No, nope, I thought I had it on there. Uh, you saw my porn folder <laughs> on my thumb drive. Which one is my porn folder? Point it to me because I I could use one. <laughs> Let's see. Uh oh, the bot. Uh oh. Uh. Uh, okay, that's Bob Blatt. It should be Bot, B-O-T, Bot Platt. Uh, Android? <laughs> Android. Oh, that's my porn? <laughs> Android's my porn folder? <laughs> no, uh, yeah, that that's actually a misnamed folder. It's, it's you know, B-O, it should be B-O-T. Yeah? <laughs> okay, fine. Uh, here you go. If you're going to call me out, I'll fire it up. I'll do a 64480 windowed. There you go. Please don't be porn. Please don't be porn. That would be terrible. No, it is my bot blast game. Whoa! Whoa, that was loud, wasn't it? Sorry about that. Jeez. Let me, uh, <laughs> volume mixer. Let me drop that down by about 100%. So, <laughs> there you go. There's my porn. B O T bot blast. Not to be confused with that stuff. So this is a prototype that I did a while back. This is about uh, oh about three or four weeks worth of stuff that I threw together. Um, and actually, I'm probably going to take this game, this design, and repurpose it for my next project, which I've teased a couple times before, which I look forward to telling you guys about pretty soon, very soon, but not quite yet. That's one I told you about. It's going to actually use a uh, uh, pretty famous intellectual property. But, sorry, I'm still teasing it right now. I'm not going to actually dish on it quite yet, but soon. Uh, when can I play it on the Nintendo 64? <laughs> wow. I'm not sure if that was a compliment or an insult or a backhanded compliment. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's retro, you know. It's, it's definitely a uh, retro look. Oh, are you saying? Oh, you're saying the 64 because it looks like uh, uh, Mario. It's a joke. Gotcha. Sorry, man. I I'm already I'm already on a long day. You know, my freelance job went for 10 hours a day, and then I just got over here and had all kinds of tech issues. So I, I'm I'm a little slow in the uptake, but yeah. Uh, you know, actually, that was no, but that was kind of an inspiration because I mean, I love the round world kind of play fields. I think they're so cool and. I just wanted to try and see if I could do one myself, so, um, it's okay, Dad? <laughs> oh, is that an age joke now? Wow. Okay. I, I resemble that remark. Um, <laughs> just because I was old enough for the original Nintendo 64 to buy it out of my own <laughs> funds. Um, but yeah, so I, I just, I wanted to try and see if I could do, like, a, a nice little round world shooter, and it's kind of interesting that uh, this is kind of a total cheat. There's, you know, I didn't, 
Yeah, it's an age joke because I'm 13. Well, okay, I got you. <laughs> Let's see. <clears throat> I, I got you by, yeah, a lot of years. Okay, <laughs> so <laughs> fair enough. But um, so the, the the fun thing about this is I'm not actually using, like, gravity in the sense of pulling towards the Earth. Um, I'm actually doing it by, I actually have, like, all these characters and all the shots are controlled by little controllers at the center of the planet and then they they so it's like all these objects are like stuck on the end of a control that rotates around the planet boom so it was just kind of a quick way to sort of like make sure that everyone sticks on the island on the planet without having to worry about the physics going nutty 13 yeah I remember it I remember being 13 years old kind of you know back like last century long time ago <laughs> yeah. So, uh. <laughs> McFly. Oh, we're doing the McFly again. There he goes. Hey, you're back. There you go. Oh, do I have to do it? I remember being 13 feels bad, man. Um. Yeah, you know, 13 was. Yeah, 13 was like, okay, but, okay, no, sorry, I gotta do the McFly, okay? Is, is my obligatory McFly? Okay, here we go, you ready? <clears throat> Doc, are you trying to tell me that you built a time machine out of a DeLorean? There you go. There, There's your McFly fix for the night, okay? Is that good? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 13 was good and bad. Uh, so good. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so yeah, so if all this other stuff, if my all my animation jobs disappear on me, right? And if I figure out if I stop remembering how to make games, I guess I can always just kind of like head up to to Hollywood, which is just basically north of here and uh like stand out in the street corner and like do Marty impressions all day in my little Marty McFly outfit. The slight voice try. So damn good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're gonna have to give me a minute here, Doc. This is this is getting heavy. There's that word again. Is there something wrong with the gravity in the future? <laughs> mm. Uh oh, I'm going I'm going down the uh, future rabbit hole again. I'll, I'll try and stop. <laughs> so, <laughs> thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Um. Okay. You know what? Maybe. I, I won't promise, but Friday I get back home, right? Friday I'll be back home in Vegas. I might be tempted to actually dress up in the Marty outfit. How about that? Complete with the glasses and the jacket, right? I'm I'm tempted. I might do that, you know. If if you promise. If you promise to come back Friday. <laughs> if you if you come back Friday <laughs> I will do the whole complete with the Casio watch. The glasses, I even have the little earphones. Cosplay from my favorite anime. Yeah. So if I can push it really far. Actually I have I'll have to dig it up. I don't have it with me. I have it at home. So as I told you, I, I do the uh, the cosplay stuff at Comic Con in San Diego, right? So I actually have all three uh future outfits, Marty outfits. So I have Back to Future One, and then I have Future Marty, and then I have Western Marty. And so one year, this is a few years ago, actually I did it on different days, and I had a buddy take a picture of me in three different positions in front of my table, and I actually composited it all together. So I have this picture of me, like all three Martys, you know, all doing the, the pose, you know. So I even made like the my own little makeshift hoverboard just out of foam core paint and that kind of stuff. But uh, the, the, you know, obviously the, the Marty won is the one that obviously gets the, the most recognition. That's the one that people see and, and kind of, you know, it's funny, I'll, I'll walk around the conventions and it's like, you know, uh, you know, it, it's like, uh, what, are you afraid you're gonna drown? You know, <laughs> so I always get that a lot, you know. Or just they ask, where's Biff? Or sometimes I ask, well, there's, where's the hoverboard? And it's kind of like, that's the wrong movie. Come on, man, if you're gonna be technical about this, Right? Look at this. This is Marty 1, okay? I mean, come on. If I had a hoverboard, I'd have to get the proper outfit. So, ugh, you obviously aren't a future fan fanatic that you, you miss that, you know. But, uh, yeah. And then, um, 
Oh, once again, sorry, going off on the, the future diatribe again. But uh, Mattel actually released uh, a, a version of the hoverboard. Uh, and they, they premiered it at Comic-Con in San Diego. And this was the year that I actually was doing the whole outfit. So it was funny. I went over because I just wanted to take a picture of it, right? So I have, like, me with, like, one of these better-made hoverboards. And I went over there. I got the picture done. And then I was going nowhere. I was there for, like, ten minutes because as soon as I start to – uh, yeah. As soon as I would start to like walk away, it's like, oh, oh, Marty, Marty, get over there, here, here, you know. So I was doing pictures for like ten minutes. Yeah, but th yeah, they did, they did. It was actually pretty good. It looked good, but they sold it like for. I mean, it was just plastic, right? And they were selling it for like a hundred fifty bucks, which is kind of like it's just plastic. So me and my makeshift a uh, thousand bucks. No, hundred. No, sorry, hundred and fifty bucks. One five zero. No, thousand bucks? Yeah, it better be made out of gold or so. Or, yeah, if it's a thousand bucks, it better work. Okay, I better be able to just like levitate. You know, I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> no. But um, yeah, it was funny. I was I was doing like posing for like a while. You know, I was the the. Yeah, I don't know. I was the Marty placeholder for a couple minutes. Uh oh. Oh, okay, I got you. So you looked it up, and they're actually going for a thousand bucks. Oh man, I wish I would have known, man. I would have bought a couple of them and turned around and <laughs> put them on eBay, complete with a picture of me holding it up or something. You know, my makeshift Marty. <laughs> wow, thousand bucks. Jeez. Okay. Yeah. I can't believe that. And it's just plastic. It, it literally is like you know two or three bucks worth of you know. Plastic. And it's a thousand bucks. <sighs> All right. Definitely missed out on that opportunity. Uh, that would have made a decent amount of <laughs> amount, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. All right. I learned my lesson. Next time, <laughs> I'll buy. <laughs> but I mean, come on. You gotta admit. You know. You look at it and you go, it's. You know, I'm not going to pay $150 for a piece of plastic, but I mean, no way. Just use the DeLorean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, such a great movie. Such a great car. Oh, actually, it's a crappy car, but it was great for the movie. <laughs> the stainless steel helps disperse the. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, just use it. Okay. I just, uh, sorry. <laughs> I just, I'm smaller screen. I just read that correctly. Just use the DeLorean. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, the Mr. Fusion is, is on the, the blink, so I'm not sure if I can actually get back there. Besides, I didn't have just bumping into myself and, you know, causing, you know, a, a paradox, you know. <laughs> uh, so. Anyways, so I did have some success, I was saying. Uh, yeah, choosing the DeLorean was a master stroke. Um, okay, so here we go. I'll, I'll go down this 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 road again. So you know that wasn't the uh, uh, question. How did you learn Unity and programming? Oh, hey, uh, happy to answer. Uh, honestly, self-taught. Um, I'm once again as as I was told earlier. I'm old, right? So when I was in school, there weren't any computer classes there was nothing like there is today so I just sort of like winged it um, I've always kind of played with it I've always you know kind of done programming as a bit of a hobby but I mean nothing really formal um, so in terms of unity uh, what I did was there was a, a website kind of like Udemy but it was a different one uh, it was something like design 6 or design 7 or something like that and they had a bunch of tutorials so I just spent like uh, a weekend just like absorbing all these tutorials and then after that I just started doing little quick prototypes and I would know how to do nothing so I would constantly find other people's code and just kind of like that's to me the biggest trick is just finding other people's code that's already done it before and since Unity's been out for a decade there's almost nothing that oh sorry about that just bounce the camera um, there's nothing you can come up against in terms of like stumbling blocks that um, that you can't find an answer to. You Google it, and you can find someone else has an example code. 
So that was it. It was just it was playing for a week or two, just trying to wrap my head around the whole process. And then uh, when I first started, actually, I didn't use C Sharp. Uh, Unity had support for uh, Unity Script, which was a derivative version of JavaScript, which is a lot more for forgiving in terms of the uh, you know the the programming. But um, over the years, Unity has kind of phased out Unity Script. Uh, I mean, it's it's totally sunsetted now in the new version 2018 they've completely yanked it so over time I, I gradually shifted to C sharp but uh, no formal class um, uh, I did take one high school class but this was uh, before most of you guys were born and it was on a Apple 2C with Pascal so technically you could say that yes I did have one computer class but you know, Pascal on an Apple IIc I don't think really counts as a formal education. <laughs> uh, it taught me what not to do. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back then, you know, candles, you know, for you know lighting and uh, I wrote Pascal in high school. Hey, look at that. See, we, yeah, we got something in common. There you go. We both did some Pascal in high school. Yeah, on an Apple IIc That was. That was fun times on the like the the green screen, you know. It was just like just the one color, but uh, yeah. <laughs> so no, okay. So sorry, I was derailed there for a second, but I was gonna finish the thought. You're talking about the DeLorean being the perfect car. You know that the DeLorean was not the initial choice, right? I don't, I'm if you're the big future fan like I am. Uh, <laughs> Apple two, the Apple the Apple two C was before your time. Okay, yeah. Yep. Well, you know, I've been around. <laughs> it's not the years, it's the mileage. Um, so, yeah, back to the future. The original script, actually, it was not a DeLorean. The original script, the time machine, was a refrigerator. Um, I don't know if you know that, but they, uh, Bob Gale, in his infinite wisdom, decided that kids like might like the movie, and he had this terrible thought of kids getting trapped in refrigerators. So they just kind of arbitrarily said, let's just make it a car and they, they rewrote the script to adapt it, but that was it. And I think originally um, Doc was a, a janitor in the high school. I think that was, you know, which y if you think about that, Doc as a janitor, as like a mad scientist janitor, kind of makes a little more sense in the sense that, you know, Marty would hang out with him, right? If he's in the school, that's one thing, you know, but, you know, Marty, this you know young 15-year-old kid hanging out with the, the creepy scientist dude that lives in the, the creepy burned down house on the hill you know that's that is kind of you know God, when you think about that that really is kind of a strange relationship you know uh, do the Marty impression but with fridge for <laughs> okay let's see um, <laughs> I don't even know what to do for uh, yeah uh, let's see doc are you trying to tell me you built a time machine out of a refrigerator? Where's the extension cord? <laughs> yeah, I hate it. I hate. I hate that I actually thought about that, though. I mean, now that I've actually, <laughs> now that I actually thought about that, it's like, you know, I mean, if you if you have a 15 year old kid and he spends all his time hanging out with an old dude, uh. He was 17. Um, was it? Was he? Um, I guess he was. I, I guess I was thinking in my own terms. Um, I was younger in high school, not because I was smarter, just because my parents got really sick and tired of me being around the house, so they put me in school as early as possible. I know, shocking, right? Thank you, thank you very much. So yeah, I, I always think in those terms that I didn't hit 16 until like part of the way into my senior year. You know, so I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I have slightly a, a different viewpoint, but uh, so yeah, I guess you're right. He was something. Although in reality, I think uh, Michael J. Fox was like deep in his twenties, right? I think he was late twenties by the time he's doing that. But yeah, he still pulled it off. I mean, after all, he was what like four foot eight height. Sorry, it's a mean height joke, but come on, you know, hey, come on. I'll grow up one of these days, you know. <laughs> All right. So that's it. I'm going to just stop doing game development, and I'll just, you know, 
I'll just do this thing where you guys hand me scripts and I'll just read all the scripts as Marty McFly. How about that? He was 24. Okay. I was, okay. I, 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 okay. There you go. So he was 24. Yeah. But I mean, he, he pulls it off. Absolutely. You know, I mean, it's, I, it, like you said, like we are talking about before, I mean, a lot more than Eric Stoltz would have. I mean, Eric Stoltz, man, he looked like he was 30 when he was probably 13, you know. Not to mention he was like all downbeat, you know, Mr. Depressed. So that's, yeah, that's my my viewpoint on it. I mean, not bagging on Eric Stoltz. Yeah, I definitely much better actor than I would ever have been. But definitely not a Marty. Um, but, yeah, so I was talking about the fridge. I guess I was, yeah, I guess I was the whole point. But, you know, oh, and just the fact that, you know, he was like a, a – originally a janitor I think in their early drafts of the, the script but yeah I'm glad they changed that you know I mean a, a janitor that invents time travel seems a bit much but yeah such a great movie alright so should I actually try and be a little productive tonight I mean uh, you know what actually I'm going to take a break here sorry I am out of my liquid refreshment so let's see don't spill don't blow up on me don't yeah. What do you want, kid? Oh, just give me a tab. A tab? How am I supposed to give you a tab? You haven't ordered anything yet. Just give me something without any sugar. <laughs> there you go. There's my bonus, Marty. Yep. So, there you go. Sorry. Just had to get the liquid refreshment break there. Uh, what's going on, folks? How you guys doing? Okay. So, what I was going to do is... I got two things I could try and shoot for. Um, uh, too much. I spent too much time watching that video. Well, you know, here's the thing. You know, back in the day... Okay, once again. When I... Hey, Shunny, when I was a little boy, uh, you have to understand, you know, I mean, you, you want to watch a movie, right? You go to Netflix, Amazon, fire it up. Worst case scenario, if it's not available for free, Amazon, you pay five bucks, and you can pretty much watch virtually any movie you want, right? Back, back in the day, um, well, to begin with, there was nothing, right? I mean, once a movie left the theater, you weren't going to see it again until like seven years later when it came on public television and then it was like you know chopped up and you know filled with commercials you know you know and then we had like when you know VHS came out uh, true I, I watched Nightmare on Elm Street Dream Warrior because it was all I had on tape for years <laughs> yeah yeah I yeah I mean I actually I worked in a video store right and I I used that I would like take the the recorder home and clone copies at home of all I mean this was like uh, Top Guns this is late 80s right I would like you know and I had like this collection of VHS you know and yeah I, would, I watched them like crazy because I mean it was so cool because there was no commercials right you know and it was like the original content it wasn't edited you know so all the good stuff was in there you know but I mean yeah I mean I it's it, it is so funny there's certain movies that I have just seen way too many times. But, okay, you know what? Oh, let's see. Uh, I, I feel so bad, nostalgia, bombing your streams, all this. No, no, that's, hey, I'm having fun. If you guys are having fun, I'm having fun. And my game will get finished eventually anyways, right? I'll just, you know what? I'll keep talking to you guys, and I'll just, I'll, I'll get my staff to take care of the game for me. I'll just, uh, staff, st staff. Oh, I, I forgot, I still don't have a staff. Who cares? The game will get finished, right? I, it, come on, I worked on it over the weekend, right? So there you go. I actually made some progress. I showed you, you know, that the little guys actually pop up correctly now. So, you know, I'll get it done. But, um, oh, so I was going to do the, uh, the the true, uh, <laughs> this is terrible, the, the true confessions. Um, so this would have been, what, late 70s, uh, 80? So before video, uh, videotape movies even existed, you know, I mean, originally when they would release movies on videotape, they would sell them for, I mean, everyone's used to, like, DVDs and 
movies being like you know 12 bucks 15 bucks or whatever right VHS movies used to be a hundred dollars and we're talking decades ago you know because they were designed to be sold to video stores excuse me and then you would like pay a membership to go to a video store and then you'd rent the movie right but I mean no one remembers this but Top Gun was actually the first movie to not charge a hundred dollars right they had this experiment and they just they sold it for nineteen dollars and they sold millions you know because it was just so incredibly cheap that we all did that right and we all bought it like crazy but um, so yeah so if you if you're lucky enough you had someone that had access to you know certain cables and that kind of stuff in Japan anime cost 60 bucks plus for DVD Wow okay okay well then it's it's <laughs> it's still not cheap Jeez. But my dad actually got uh, a pirated copy of a movie. And it was the first time we ever had an actual movie that was, um, there's like two, three episodes and most on one DVD. <laughs> so, yeah, that's some serious expense just for a couple episodes, you know. But, you know, if you love it, you got to have it, right? So, so the very first movie, the pirated movie I had as a little kid totally inappropriate for my age too was uh, the Burt Reynolds movie Smokey and the Bandit and I watched I, 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 I can't even tell you how many times I've seen that movie I mean probably at least a hundred times but I mean to the point where I could just like take moments and just like do entire passages of the movie it's just embarrassing but I mean it's just it's so ingrained you know but you know it's it's I mean, part of it is youth, and part of it is just because it was such a novel thing at the time to have that, you know, to have access to that, you know, in unedited movie. I mean, all the swear words came out of her TV, which, once again, was an incredibly novel concept. But now, I mean, you know, I mean, now you got access to everything, which I love, you know. I mean, I'm, I'm a total, I mean, I Netflix, Amazon, I got them both, and I watch them like crazy. I used to pirate VHS and draw covers for them myself. Oh, that is cool. That is so cool. That's that's incredibly creative. I I would put stickers on them, put the name on them and just put them aside. <laughs> I d I did not actually go to the effort. That's that's really cool. That's nice. Yeah. Wow. That's cool. You like make a little sleeve for it with the the custom artwork for it. That's pretty trick. I like that. <laughs> let's see alright I can still try and do something here so I can either do one of two things I can either try and go back and start replacing the uh, placeholder mascots with the proper ones or I could try and find how to uh, uh, record movies from TV and make the covers yeah I was like 10 or so that is so cool I love it that's very creative 10 years old. Ten, what was I doing at 10 years? 10 years old, I was probably just, I don't know, eating paste. <laughs> um, no, I drew a lot. When I was a kid, uh, I, was, I was a terrible student. Um, I don't know if you can get a sense of this, but sometimes I get easily distracted. Uh, yeah, okay, I guess it's kind of obvious. But, yeah, um... Before anime was huge in the U.S., my friends and I did that in the 90s for stuff we uh, we liked. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so, I mean, I, I, I did. I, I drew a lot. It was so much more entertaining than um, <laughs> actually doing schoolwork. I was, a, I was a terrible student all through high school and college, but I still... You know, in spite of myself, I still manage to graduate, which, <laughs> for what that's worth. But, uh, yeah, when I was a kid, man, of course, you know, I, I, I grew up on Star Wars, right? Oh, now, there's a movie. That was a movie because that was, once again, before VHS, before any of that kind of stuff. They would just bring Star Wars back out to the theater and do re-releases, right? And my dad would literally, he would just drop me off at the movie theater and he'd give me enough money to get some, like, popcorn. Uh, at some point, and then I would just go into the movie and I would just watch it like four times in a row, you know. And, it, and like in you know one of those times, I'd go at it and actually get popcorn and then go back in. But I did. I would watch it back to back to back to back. I was just so so enthralled by it, you know. 
So, I mean, of course, I was drawing TIE Fighters and X-Wings, you know. Uh, when I was a kid, they had the, the first remastered of Star Wars. Yeah. Yeah, I got mixed feelings about that when it got Lucasized. Um, yeah, there's a... Uh, I don't know if you ever watched South Park episodes, but there's an episode of South Park, which is absolutely my drop-dead favorite episode. And it's, uh, the episode is entitled Free Hat. And <laughs> it, it completely jumps on the whole... <laughs> Let's not talk about that. Yeah, it, it the episode of South Park. Uh, you can go to like South Park Studios on the website and probably watch it. It's, the episode is called Free Hat, and I love it because it goes on that very subject about you know, you know, Lucas going back and modifying the, the movies, and of course, like you know, uh, Spielberg went back and modified um, E. T. Right? He digi digitally replaced all the guns with walkie talkies. So you have G-Men running around going ch -ch -ch with walkie-talkies. They're they're loading walkie-talkies. <laughs> you know? Uh, let's see. YouTube. Oh, did you find it? Wow, that was fast. Let's see. Is that... Uh, Star oh, yeah! 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 That w yeah, the Star Wars. Yeah, <laughs> I, I I watched that. That is hysterical. I like the song. I like the original song a lot, but that cover version is absolutely hysterical too, right? And it's just it is so true. You know, you just have the Lucas kind of going, <laughs> you know, messing with it, <laughs> Lucas. You know, I, I you know I'm conflicted. You know, because I mean, that's it's an interesting discussion. You guys can tell me what you think, but and the, you know the question is who owns. Th who owns the product, right? I mean, we as fans, we feel that it's it's ours, and once he puts it out there into the universe, right, it's it's ours to love and ours to cherish, and he shouldn't be able to go back and, and mess with it. But at the same time, he is the guy that created it, right? I mean, this is his baby, you know, and, you know, if he if he wants to go back and butcher it, I mean, that, that is his prerogative. Uh he had a, I think he had a lot of good people that kept him in check. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Marsha Lucas is a perfect example. I mean, the story is, is Marsha, the the original cut of Star Wars was a total fiasco. But his, his wife at the time, Marsha Lucas, is the one that cut it and turned it into the the masterstroke. Uh, then, as the whole franchise grew, nobody could say no to him anymore. That, very true. Um, I think I mentioned before. Uh, I don't know if you guys were around, but I mentioned before that I actually had an interview. Uh, this is like, whoa, a kajillion years ago. But I had an interview uh, to do animation for the, the third Star Wars movie. You know, and I uh, had a great interview, but uh, I didn't land the job. Uh, let's see. Uh, then as the whole franchise grew, and nobody could say, yeah. But so, I mean, it's it's so true that, you know, I mean, I didn't get to work on it, but I did have a friend of mine, uh, a very talented uh, visual effects artist uh, named Barry that actually worked up in the uh, third, as in the third e episode three. Yes, yes, I would have been animating Roger Roger robots, you know, uh, had I actually gotten that job. But, uh, you know, I don't know, mixed blessing. I mean, it had been fun to say that, yes, I worked on the, the Star Wars film, but then I'd have to say, yes, it was one of the prequels, and they go, oh, you know, <laughs> but... I dodged a bullet. <laughs> I I dodged a laser blast. But, <clears throat> yeah, so what I was going to say is a friend of mine uh, worked on the third floor. So he worked in the, the, the previous stuff. And he would tell us stories, you know, about how it was kind of creepy. No, I mean, part of it was because it was literally the, the third floors, the attic of uh, Lucas Ranch. But part of it is also because they had cameras that were webcasting all the time, which, I mean, nowadays it's much more common, but at the time it was kind of, it felt very uh, voyeuristic, I think. But, um, yeah, and, I mean, he would, he would, like, he would talk about when Lucas would come in and he would suggest stuff and they would just kind of go, uh, really? Okay. You know, but you're right. I mean, it, it was the sense that no one would say no to him. No one could say no to him. You know, I mean, when... It's not like one of the things you could go to his higher up and say that this guy's out of control because he was the higher up, right? I mean, it was his baby, you know, it was totally under his control, you know. But um, yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, uh, it's uh, I, I like I said, I'm totally conflicted because I mean, you know, I absolutely love the movie, 
still do, you know, it was, you know, a childhood favorite, but, you know, it is his, you know. Uh, I love to hate on Lucas, but you can't deny the influence uh, on our field. Uh, not just movies, but also computer graphics. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, I, you, I don't know if you know this, but Pixar actually came from Lucas, right? Um, the, well, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> You're typing as I'm saying. Yeah, uh, the the Adventures of Andre and Willie B was an experiment, and it was being uh, uh, heralded by uh, uh, John Lasseter. And um, yeah, and it's just it, it's uh, yeah, and but the stumbling block came from the fact that John Lasseter saw this as a tool to s tell stories in movies, and Lucas just saw it as a way to make X wings cheaper. You know, and they kind of had that that split, and the agreement was if uh, uh, is one of your heroes. Yeah, Catmull. Yeah, I love it. Uh, uh, Clark Catmull. I mean, we still have those settings in all the 3D programs, right? Where it's like, what type of of shading do you want to use? So, yeah, a a a true. I mean, it's, it's so funny that you think that it's like that stuff's been around for forever, but no. I mean, that was him pioneering, pioneering all that stuff. So. Yeah, Z buffer. There you go. Yeah, yes. Which yeah, absolutely changed everything. Texture mapping. Uh huh. Yeah. I mean, so just yeah, the, the combination of Catmull to to create the technology, right, and Lasseter to have the vision, right, of of doing these storytellings. Um, I can still yeah, I remember, and it's so funny. I remember the very first time I saw Luxo Jr. Uh, I went to a uh, animated uh, film festival, a short film film festival, uh, with no knowledge what was there. It's just I wanted to see animated films, and in the middle of it, right, just right there in the middle, was you know uh, Luxo Jr. Right, and as soon as it came on, I I was just I was focused. I was trying to figure it out, and I swear for the first couple minutes. I just assumed it was stop motion animation, you know. Um, I mean, especially like way like the the cord would would ripple and be like little pops because they had to animate everything by hand then, right? So there was there was no procedural stuff to do that. So it it had kind of a, a imprecise stop motion look to it. But yeah, when I learned that was actually CG, I was just blown away and been obsessed. Um, Toy Story was the first uh, VHS I bought uh, from my own pocket money. That's so cool. Mm. That is so cool. Yeah. It, it was definitely an inspiration for me as well. I had actually started a uh, a, a short animated film. Um, this would have been in the late 90s. And I, I, mean, I tinkered with it on and off, you know, and I, w I would get discouraged and I would kind of stop down on it, you know, and maybe like do little bits here and there, but just never really push. But then I came out to visit some friends here in California and we went to go see Toy Story 2. And yeah, that was it. I just, I went home and I just like went nuts and raced through it, finished it. And then that's when I moved out to California. And this would have been like in 2000 with my little animated short film under my you know, I tucked in my arm and just went out here and just said, you know, here, I do this, you know, let me be an animator. And, you know, 18 years ago, that was a lot more conceivable. It was, a, you know, it was easier to walk in and just tell people you, you were an animator and people believed it. But, uh, yeah, I mean, all those, I mean, especially, I mean, the, the short films. Um, yeah, I, I love all the, I, well, no, I won't say I love all. I love most Pixar films. They've had a couple of missteps, right? But my own personal favorite, still to this day, I think, is not even one of their feature films. My favorite thing is one of their short films called Knick Knack. Um, I don't know if you've seen it. It's it's in a couple of compilations, but and of course Disney sort of like corrected a couple of things. They they Disneyized a, a couple of the characters, but they're um, like snow globes kind of kind of thing, right? And it's just these uh, like touristy collector kind of things, so these little figurines that come to life. And it was the first time that they introduced in, in computer animation like like physical comedy. And it was just, it was so perfect. It was so hysterical that I just, I loved it. The timing was great. And I mean, to this day, it's still one of my favorites, you know? I mean, and you have Bobby McFerrin singing in the music in the background. And it's just like, 
that to me is just like such a beautiful, beautiful piece. But I and mean, I mean, so many of their films are just gorgeous as well. But um, I mean, you know, skipping over maybe a couple of the more recent Cars movies, but you know, <laughs> we'll skip that. <laughs> but yeah, and for the record, I actually I never applied to Pixar. Um, let's see. Uh, if you're interested in a not so technical, uh, the time at Pixar. Uh, check out uh to Pixar and Beyond. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. No, I own that. Yeah, to to Pixar and Beyond. Yes. Yeah, love that book. Love history. Yeah, me too, man. I I I that I definitely absorbed that like a sponge. It was just, it was so cool just to see how it almost didn't happen on so many different levels, you know. I mean, the irony that they were, you know, that it was just going to be a technology company, just a hardware company, you know, and that it sort of like backed its way into the whole, well, if we do commercials, maybe we can earn some cash, you know. But, uh, yeah, like I said, I never actually had the nerve to apply to Pixar. Um, to me, <coughs> it was... I, I looked at it as sort of a lose-lose scenario, you know. I mean, if I applied to Pixar, um, <clears throat> yeah, it would be my dream employer. Yeah, it just to me, it's like, okay, so if I apply to Pixar and um, and they say no, right, you know, it's like Marty, right? You know, what if they just say I'm no good? I just don't think I could take that kind of rejection, you know. But, I mean, that was part of it, you know. And then the other part is what if they actually said yes, you know. I mean, oh, my God. <clears throat> I mean, I've been doing animation for a kajillion years, but I know my abilities, and I know to what extent it is, and I'm comfortable in the stuff I do, right? It's not Pixar quality. The idea that I would be, like, animating around those guys and women that are just so amazingly talented, I would just be, like, waking up in a cold sweat every morning, kind of going, I'm just going to get fired. I'm just going to get fired. I can't, I can't do this, you know? And just, I mean, I would love to work on those projects, but I would just, I would be so terrified that I just, I would measure. Uh, you've got to grow a ton in that position. Yeah, I think so. I, I think, I mean, I, I've, I've actually been to Pixar. Um, not as an employee, <laughs> but no, uh, a friend that was there actually invited me and, you know, I, I got to tour the place and <clears throat> I've actually talked to a few people that have actually worked there and I think that's totally true. I, I think that no matter how good you are, um, yeah, I, I think once you get into there, right, you definitely have the ability to kind of go, yeah, wow, I still got room to, to improve. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. But, you know, and then, I mean, I also, I mean, I was not a big fan of the idea of moving up to, to Northern California. Uh, I mean, I was okay with Southern California, but, I mean, at this point, honestly, I'm, I'm home in in Las Vegas it's just so much cheaper you know and you know like this you know if I get a job I just cruise into LA for a couple of weeks and then sneak back to Vegas uh, I would love to work on real time rendering there yeah yeah um, <clears throat> oh yeah so there you go um, uh, Rob Legato who is uh, he was the one that was actually doing all of the uh, the ILM lab stuff um, my first job when I moved out to, to LA when I, when I was trying to get animation work and I just need to pay the bills. My first job I was working as a data wrangler at uh, Sony Imageworks on Stuart Little 2 and Rob Legato was the, the top dog. Uh, even then he was like, you know, he was like insanely young but so, so brilliant man. So I'm not surprised that he jumped and you know, it's just absolutely running the show there at, at ILM. I mean, the, you know, he, he he's the one that led the the crew that did the uh, Trials of Tatooine, the uh, the VR Star Wars demo, which I don't know if you've seen it, but, I mean, it's just insanely immersive. <clears throat> uh, Disney Research opened in Zurich last year, not as a researcher, but as an engineer who works closely with researchers, prototyping, prototypes of life, not having had the guts to apply. You know what? Same for me, too. <clears throat> Excuse me. They... Uh, uh, this is about a year ago, about a year and a half ago. Uh, ILM Labs was looking for someone that had uh, like a couple of years worth of video game experience, but also had several years worth of 
uh, film or television experience and animation and stuff like that. And it's kind of like, man, I mean, they just, they describe me to a T, you know, and <clears throat> kind of like the Pixar thing. I mean, it was, it was a situation where I was so tempted to apply for it, but I mean, at that point, the idea of uprooting my wife and I and, and moving up to, to go work up there was just, it seemed too much, you know? And also if I applied and I got crickets then I'd just, I'd feel like garbage again. So I, I actually did not apply, you know, part of me wishes I really had, you know, because I mean the stuff they're, they're doing is just insane cutting edge stuff, you know, uh, but it didn't happen. I didn't try. Oh, well, uh, it was knowledge in computer graphics, but also having knowledge uh, with front end dev. Ah, is it? Let me see this. Uh, didn't come up. Is it? Oops. Let's see. I'm sure it was a JPEG, or it it actually didn't display correctly. But <laughs> I'm assuming it's the uh, uh, a frowny face or something similar. <laughs> but yeah, uh, knowledge with front end. Yeah, well. That would have definitely cut me out for sure as well. Oh, it's just a meme. Okay. <laughs> mm. Yeah. But no, I mean I'm I'm not about to complain though. I I've had a fantastic time and all the stuff I've done. I mean it's, I mean true story. So, as I said, I moved out to California, uh, and it was 2000, uh, early 2000, and. My only goal was to try and actually go to work at Digital Domain, and it took me about a little over a year, but I got in there, and I mean it was, it was awesome, man. I I was, you know, that was what I wanted most, and you know after I worked there, let's see, for I think I worked a year and a half, in the commercial division, and then it's kind of like, well, what do I do now? Because that was that was my goal. So <laughs> I've been sort of like making up as I've gone along since then, you know. But, uh, and just, I mean, every, enjoying every new challenge. But it's been great, you know, and being able to, to jump in the game stuff and uh, still be able to, like, go back and dabble in the, uh, the VFX stuff, you know, which is still fun. I can't wait to tell you guys about what I was working on, uh, what I've been working on for the last week and for a few more weeks. Um, can't do it until it actually hits the, uh, hits the screen, but... I'll tell you about it later on. Uh, it's nice that you're also doing your own stuff. It is. It is. Um, <clears throat> I mean, it's it, it's always a challenge when you're, you know, when you're you're debating. As you know, I mean, it, have I actually reached the proper level? You know, because you you can sometimes overthink things and you can go too far and waste your time. And the other things you can kind of think are fine and put it out there and then realize that you were completely off base and that no that's not fine you still got work to do so I mean I, I try and that's the reason I go to all the conventions and put the games out there let people test it so I can I get the proper feedback hey there you go I got a follow there thank you Arkenstone85 thanks for the follow I appreciate that thank you thank you thank you much um, oh you know what actually did I, I'm, up, I'm still I'm sorry I was so messed up in my setup here that I forgot. Um, I'm streaming to three different places. Let me uh, do this real quick. Um, doo -doo -doo. Uh, need, let me go to my... What am I going? Desktop. Really? That's all I got from my desktop? Let me fire up Chrome here because I realized I might actually have something happening. Uh, I need to get my restream chat set up so I can actually see if there's other stuff happening uh, restream. Sorry, bear with me one second here. I'm sorry. This is not the most exciting, but chat. Let's see if that actually works. There he goes. I think that's working. There he goes. Cool. All right. So yeah, I mean, it's just um, most of my stuff is obviously coming through Twitch, obviously, but it's it's also on um, Mixer and YouTube Red. Ow, crud. So I just want to make sure that if someone actually piped up there, I wouldn't miss it. That'd be a jerk thing, you know? Someone's trying to talk to me. It's like, he's not responding. Why is he ignoring me? But <laughs> there you go. Um, but yeah, 
it, it's it's been great. I mean, I it's <clears throat> it's fun to see the evolution that I've gone through with my game stuff, right? You know, uh, you know, finding the right and wrong ways to do things. But um, yeah, it's when the stuff gets dragged out, you kind of want to move on to the next project. But it's that's I think that's the biggest challenge. Starting a game, to be honest, I think starting a game is really easy, but actually finishing it. You know, especially when you've been on it for so long that you just you tend to lose sight of the objectives. You know, you know, and you just you really want to kind of like that's your issue. Yeah, I think that's most people's issue. You know, I mean because you know enthusiasm is such a big driver. You know, I mean you you know you're you're you get all this excitement, right? And everything's new, right? The prototype, you're bringing it together, and you're just you're seeing the the, the beginning kernels of of the thing happen. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, it's just when you're you're just putting it together. But, I mean, you know, it's like once the thing is actually up and running and you have to finish all the other components, that's when it really gets bogged down. And, and then disturbing it uh, and that crap uh, and that crap on, man. Uh, that crap on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I used to take feedback a lot more personal when I first started doing it. Uh, just uh, hire someone to do that if I ever get to that point. Oh, you're talking about uh, yeah, distribution. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's definitely been Achilles heel for me as well. I've been um, really bad about that in my previous games. My first game, I actually hired a PR firm uh, because it was my first toe in the water. And it, it did pretty well for me, but I mean, it's a lot of money that I spent on that. Uh, since then, I've been really bad about just sort of like putting the game out there and just kind of hoping it does, you know, throw the bird out the window, hope it flies away and does well. But uh, this one I hope to actually get back to uh, doing proper, you know, proper advertising. Um, I'm toying with the idea of actually maybe, hey, uh, of actually maybe doing some PR service again uh, to help with that. I mean, because the hardest thing I think is... Um, you know, just trying to reach the influencers, right? I mean, the the PR firms, you know, in theory, the thing they're they're giving you is sort of like the velvet rope into the club, right? You know, they give you access to uh, the influencers who, no guarantee they'll actually still cover you, but at least they are going to get you an opportunity to get to them versus you doing it yourself. Uh, Ichio can be a, a, uh, good for getting it out there. Um, yeah. Um... Let's see, I have, uh, no, I actually have it on NDDB. Uh, I don't actually have anything set up on Ichio yet. Um, yeah, I, I think in terms of exposure, I think that's a, another avenue. Um, I know a lot of people have talked about the idea of the, the trade-off of Ichio versus uh, Steam, you know, um, or, or even like Discord now, right? That's another avenue. I, but if you're a small crew trying to release on so many different platforms, I think gets to be... A, a fantastic challenge as well so I mean it's it's a tough choice but um, yeah let's see I don't yeah I have an Ichio account but I don't think I've actually set anything up on there um, but I, I yes this one I should definitely look into um, as I said before I'm still on the fence on if I'm gonna actually do this as a release for desktop as well uh, definitely for mobile you know iOS and Android but um, if I go that route, then I got to figure out how I want to monetize. You know, you know, if I just do it as like you get the 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 local play for free, and then if you want online, you have to pay some money. Or if I want to try and do a free to play, which I think free to play, especially on Steam, is a really big challenge. I think you really got to be a bigger crew to pull that off. You know, I mean, there's just there's so much to handle, and it's just you know, I mean. It seems like a minority of my time actually goes to the actual development, and it seems like the rest of the time is handled just dealing with conversations on different subjects or just the actual business side, you know. Yeah, but I'm crying about it, you know. I, I, I it just, it, you just gotta work harder, you know. You just gotta get it out the door. Which, hopefully, if I ever finish this, I will be doing. Just gotta figure out. Once again, I still got. I'm still toying with the idea if I'm going to do this as my true, like I talked about, as the free to play with all the ads and the in-app purchase stuff, or if I'll bite the bullet and just do it 
as a uh, free for local play and then just a one-time fee for multiplayer. I'm, I'm, I'm still ping-ponging back and forth on that idea. Once I get closer to getting all my to-do lists wrapped up, I'll probably revisit that. Um, but for the time being, I just got to focus on getting this thing knocked out. All right. So like an hour ago, I started talking about trying to find my mascots. <laughs> so maybe I'll actually try and do a little bit of that now. Um, so what I want to do is actually find these guys. So I go uh, game object. Let's see. Do it that way. But uh, but no, please keep talking. You got other questions or comments or other movie talks? <laughs> I'll, I'll talk movies for forever. Uh, haven't seen anything uh, lately. What's the What's the last movie I actually went to the theater to see? I don't. God, it's been so long. Um, I want to see Aquaman if the reviews are good. I think I mentioned. Uh, They're definitely having more fun than I am. Um, I'm at work, too. Uh, don't respond sometimes, but I'm listening. Cool. Okay. That's cool. I, I appreciate you actually taking the time to listen <laughs> while you're working. True multitasking. I try and do that sometimes uh, if if I get slow where I am, if I'm between stuff. I'll, I'll, but, I mean, I'm doing it on a little phone, like, you know, like this. So, you know, I, I'll try and bring up some of the guys doing coding, and they'll be typing something. It's like, oh, how did he do that? I don't, I don't know, because it's, like, this big, and I can't read anything, you know, but I can't, like, bring out, like, a proper screen, y you know, I get in trouble if I try to, like, put it on a proper screen, but I do like watching those, you know, it's, it's interesting to, to see how the other people approach it, and see how I'm doing around, I, like, so my, my dream is to get to, like, Andy Schatz level of, like, people watching, you know, uh, Andy is definitely a, the, the any dev king, I think, in terms of like streaming developer kind of stuff. You know, he's been, you know, he's been doing it a lot longer than I have. Although actually, I met him um, when he had just released one of his earliest games. I met him at a game developer conference, and I talked to him for a little while. We, when I lived in L.A., we actually met up a few times, but. Uh, I had actually talked to him initially about maybe doing animation work for him, but um, I didn't. Uh, <laughs> I guess I got too wrapped up in my stuff, and he got wrapped up in his. But, but yeah, he's he's definitely got the whole streaming down to a science, and uh, and he is able. This is I would love to know how he does this. He actually streams like regular music uh, in a background, and I don't think he gets dinged for it. But I've done it a couple of times where I had just like you know streaming soundtracks. And then I come back and look at my streams later, and they're, they're all marked as, like, you know, blasphemy. You had music. We're muting your audio. It's kind of like, but it's, like, like the volume's, like, that much in the background. It's not like I'm, you know, ripping them off, you know, but, oh, well. He's got a system that I don't know how he does it, but I'll have to figure it out someday. Or just, I don't know, maybe no music, just keep talking the whole time. Uh, that might get old fast, right? <laughs> All right. So, uh, so, uh, so, uh let me go. Uh, let's see. Uh, yes, if, uh should count as. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I I totally get where they're coming from. I mean, it's their product. They want to make money off of it. But I mean, if it's something that's you know, just like so subtle background, yeah. It would be nice. I, I, but I, I think actually I, I went out and got a bunch of my, like, uh, in Unity I own a bunch of music from assets I've gotten over the years, and I have a bunch of uh, chiptune music. Uh, so I was going to, like, put that together. I just haven't gotten around to it. So, uh, I mean, here there's just enough ambient noise that I think it's not boring. It's not just my voice. But when I get ba back home, uh, I may start doing that. I may... Uh, try and put together just some subtle chiptune music that won't get me in trouble, but at least there'll be something tinking in the background, so it's not just me. Okay, so what I want to do is, actually, I guess, I 
could actually just go straight to the uh, verses. Uh, yeah, just do it with a temp script. Uh, temp object, rather. So let me go uh, object temp. Uh, uh, oops. It is equal to, and then I gotta find. I gotta find him first. So a game object find. Hey, look, I'm actually typing something for a change instead of just running my mouth. Woohoo! <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna track down. I have this. Uh, so I have just these generic uh, game objects, empty game objects on both these islands. Here's the red side and the blue side. And whichever mascot I load up, I uh, just parent to that. So then what I want to do is uh, just try and find the child. So I'm going to find that, the first I'm going to find that object. And then i got to find the child of it. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Um, I'm going to do the red first. Let me see if I can just, rather than do a whole other layer of temp object, I'm going to try and go crazy and see if I can go straight to it. So I'm going to say the red script will be attached to the child of that. So I'll say the equal to the temp ah, temp object uh, get child child um, string name. Oh, that's going to be a challenge because I don't know since there's multiple mascots um, how do I get that with just the identifier, not the actual name? That matches. Um, hmm. I could go through a, a for loop, I guess, and just check all, all five, because there's, there's only five mascots it could be. So it'd be mascot one, two, three, four, five. So I could do it that way, but no, there's got to be some way to do it with just like an ID, right? Get, uh, let me try component and children. Maybe I can get away with it that way. System site, yeah, there we go. Um, oh crud, I'm not sure the true... Uh, uh, villager menu version, so it'd be, would it be get component? No, it's get component. I already have that, so, you know what, I'm going to see if I have another example of this somewhere. A hey. children collider. Oh, that's it. Let me grab that as my reference. Oops. There you go. I like cheating a lot. If I've done it somewhere else, <laughs> I'll pull it back out. Cool. Okay. So get component and children. And in this case, it's going to be. Uh, oh, didn't like that. Main. No, it's called villager menu version. Ah. Menu version. There it is. Cool. So that actually should get me straight to it. I should have the script at that point. And then I'll do the same. Uh, but then find the blue. So let me change this from red to blue. So i got to make sure I run this after the, uh, the villager is physically attached um, to that locator, to that, that empty object. Otherwise, it's going to throw an error, of course. Oh, actually, that's wrong, isn't it? Nope. That is right. This is the one I'm changing. So, blue script, and that should... Good. So, once I kick that off, I should have red script uh, and the blue script, so it won't error out from that point on. Now, the question mark is, when do I actually tell it to search for the mascots? Um... I guess I could just do it. Uh, let's see. Start. Uh, 
could do it on a start line online game. After a lot's happening, I just throw it right here in the middle somewhere. Just tell it to find the mascots. Because at this point, we're doing an online game, so if I just toss them in here right in the mix, those mascots should be loaded, so it shouldn't throw an error. Now, the other place that could happen is uh, select local game. In the off chance that there's no one to play, it reverts back to AI, but treats it like an online game. So let me find mascots. There. So that should make that work. Let's give it a try. Let's see if I did that right my first try. Oh, you know what? I could, just to be doubly safe, just to, uh, I'm going to just do this. Uh, looking for mascots. And I'll throw my little boom, boom, boom in front of there. So if that pops up, we know that it actually did search for it. So, let it compile one more time. I'll fire it off. All right. So while I was cooking, so I did mention I'll mention again. Uh, I will not be online Wednesday night uh, because I will be at uh, thirty thousand feet, flying back home for a brief trip. But I will come back on Friday uh, unless something pops up that I'm not expecting. But I should be back on Friday from my home location. Why is it chewing for forever? Uh, this is getting scary. It shouldn't take that. What? Huh. Okay. Now, once again, I, I am working off my thumb drive, so that may be upsetting it, but did I just completely lock up Let's see. I don't think I've actually changed anything. So I can actually kill this if I have to and not worry about losing anything. But I would like to not do that. Let me see. Is it going to say your details? No. It doesn't show it as not responding. But And it doesn't show it as compiling the scripts. Yeah. I think it's dead, Jim. It doesn't show as hung in the task manager, but I think it is actually foobard. So I'm going to kill it and restart. Oh, okay. And task. Let's try that. It's dead. It's dead, Jim. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which is kind of weird because normally when that does happen, Watch, it's going to compile the scripts again. Watch, it's going to do that. I'm, ah. Uh, watch. Yep, I knew it. You better not have broke something. If you broke something, I'm going to be so pissed at you, Unity. Tell me it didn't break it. Uh-oh. Oh. oh. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> okay. It's loading. Hey! <laughs> I was about to put that at about 50 50. I'm starting to think I nuked it from orbit there. Alright, push that back out. There you go. Okay. So, where was I? Oh, oh, I forgot to mute audio. Dong, 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 dong. always mute it just because I've listened to it way too many times over the years and you guys don't want to sit through it right now alright it's doing something it's maybe <laughs> uh, no once again I am going off of my memory stick so I mean that that's probably why it's being a pain but There it is. Boom, boom, boom. Boom. Doom. Doom, 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 doom. Okay. All right. So let's try this out. Like that. All right. So now what I want to see is these guys are going good. 
boom, boom, boom. All right. So now I need uh, show versus menu. That's good. There are two audio listeners. Ugh. Okay, I'll ignore that for right now. Let me see if I can finish them off real quick. It shouldn't be because it's... Uh, uh, I think it didn't actually hi turn off... Should have... Should have turned off the uh, the versus camera, but I guess it didn't. All right, let me th concentrate here for a second so I can just plow through this really quick. Here we go. I'll go. Boom. Oh come on. There you go. You can see a little bit better now. Oh look at that. Ah, I'm missing everything. I'm just trying to like cruise through this and I'm just playing terrible there it is okay just doing this just so I can see at the end go ahead go for the cloud see if I care because I'm gonna finish you off there we go all right I want to like shrink this back down I said respect let's see there it is yes it worked Actually, fix something for a change. Woohoo! <laughs> Sweet. Okay, so what what is happening here? What the cool thing is, is as I said, originally these guys were hard coded, right? They were loaded, and all the stuff was already just kind of like preset. But now I've actually got it back to uh, just prefabs. So now it loads it on the fly, and it it grabs them after the fact and works. So the nice thing is. Let's see, it's, oh, it's already after 10. I was going to say I could switch out the, uh, start switching on the characters, but because this is a slightly older version, I don't have the other mascots plugged back in. i got to go through that again. So, you know what, I'll do that in my off time so you guys don't, because I've already done it like twice, I think, when I had stuff break. So I'll do that later uh, on my own time, but hopefully next go around, I'll have it where it's loading up the different uh, villagers. But that's cool. That's actually a big big thing um i have to see if it actually loads in the correct ones um i'll figure that out later excuse me what i have to try and do is um i may do this at home is to test on multiple uh devices with the different mascots to see if it actually sends the data over correctly um which i may not have done i actually may have hard coded that so it, it probably isn't right anyways but but it's getting closer that's great. The fact that it starts off with no characters on the island, as it was in the beginning, they were just hard coded, but now it actually drags them in at runtime. So cool. That's actually good. And that's another. Th actually, why did that? Sh that shouldn't. I thought that was because I I had this error when I was playing with it over the weekend. I thought that was because I had no internet activity. But this is my networking. Send host. Um, okay, let me try it this way. Uh, oh, crud. Announce host. Host loaded. Uh, I love to share a net, but it does this one thing. It's kind of funky where it splits some of the, uh, the commands into two different classes, and it's kind of a pain to reunite them. So what I would like to do is actually have the this. This is just doing a remote function call to the other player but obviously it it's kicking off before they're synced so what I'd like to do is be able to check like right here if connected but I don't think that's actually a command that's on the TNO side uh, is uh, is mine is invoking is joining channel is active and enabled hey okay I might be able to use that if not active and enabled then bail return cool that actually could knock it out maybe if that command uh, has behavior and had enabled called let's see if that does it uh oh is it going to compile this time or is it just going to sit there endlessly hey there he goes all right. Oh, it's thinking. All right, no error. Let's 
Let's see. If the air pops up, it's going to pop up like right away. Yeah, this yeah, it's still doing it. So, yeah, unfortunately doing the uh is it active and enabled is meaningless. That doesn't actually see if it's truly online. Uh so I have it. So I kind of have to kick it off in the beginning. Let's see. I, maybe I can I need to do it in the beginning just to see. Uh, what is the issue? Uh, it's sorry, I can't see. It's what what's happening is my networking software, uh, the the networking tool I use called the ShareNet. It's throwing an error um, because it's it's trying to send over a remote call to the other player, but there is no other player yet. But the reason is is I uh, I make sure it's active in the beginning. So that way, um, when you first log on to see if you're online, it checks two things. It checks the uh, uh, the user player file, which is online, and then it checks for the, the networking, which I do at the beginning, but maybe I can get that not to happen. Let's see if, uh, so this is on start. No, 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 actually it's on game controller, it's on start. So yeah, I'm loading the script. Uh, uh, okay, so I got it. Here's what I can do. I'll just uh, um, yeah, is guest and uh, let's see. I'll do it here if I. Add a bool, say, do announce equals true. So it defaults to true. And then if not do announce, then return. And don't do that. Oops. Return. Sweet. All right. So what happens is, is I'm loading the... Uh, remote procedural call script uh, at when it's starting up the game but I also do it initially um, when it logs in which I probably don't have to do but it's this is like legacy code from like two years ago when I was still trying to figure out how to make the networking happen but this is a bit of a hack but it should work so now when I do this at start I'm gonna just say this will be false here there. So it shouldn't actually do that call this time. So I think this will fix it. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't know uh, if I, I can like make this text a little bit larger. I don't know. I know it's like when I l watch other people do it, it's really hard to read it sometimes. Um, I could do it that way. Okay. No, it's still coming up. You jerk. So start. Set active. Debug log. Uh, let's try to announce. It should be saying false here. Do announce true, and I'm saying it's false. Do announce. If not do announce, return. Unless there's another place in my code where it actually calls that. All right. Let's see if this at least gives me a little insight. This should come up as do announce false. Oh. Oh, I got this. Uh, do now it's true. Really? But I say false. Wow, that was unexpected. That says false right there. Am I calling it twice or something? Let me just... Is it false? Oh, 
Oh, wait a second, wait a second. Oh, I think I realized what I just did wrong. Oh, sorry. It's actually second command, isn't it? I got... That's it. I'm just getting stupid. Uh, is guess, and it doesn't matter because we didn't reach that. Yeah, I'm putting that false in there, but actually there's two commands. So I need a second one. There it goes. That should make it work. All right. Clear this out. Refill my drink one more time. No error. That was it. Sweet. All right. And it, I mean, it's it's not like it's not a showstopper. I mean, it's an error that pops up as more of like a warning. But it's still. I just if I'm getting analytics from the game, I don't want to see a bunch of errors that are not truly errors. You know, that looks bad. But there you go. So I had, look at that, I had two fixes tonight. That's like a record for me since I've been out in the field. Seems like most of the stuff I've been doing <laughs> for the last week and a half is just breaking stuff. <laughs> but I had a couple of nice little wins. Cool. Uh, good effort. <laughs> Thank you. <Woo. laughs> I need to get... All right, let's see. Uh, two fixes and one hour shooting the crap about movies. Yes. <laughs> uh, I need to get back to the year 1985. <laughs> I guess with that, I could also do like Casey Kasem impressions too. I've never tried, but I know he kind of sounds that and maybe like David Spade. Because I know David Spade does, like, a dead-on Marty McFly impression. <laughs> Me too, man. <laughs> yep. All right. Oh, so here we go. We were talking about Lucas earlier. Okay, you know what? Fine. I was productive. Time to be unproductive again. So we were talking about Lucas. Um, my own personal favorite movie, still to this day, my own... I mean, I love Star Wars, right? I could do it with some 1985... My personal favorite movie is actually a Lucasfilm. Um, it's not not Star Wars. This is a personal favorite. Not Star Wars, and it's not THX. Actually, my favorite was American Graffiti. I love American Graffiti. That that film is so fantastic. It was. I mean, it just it captures like this moment in history, right? You know, it's sort of like you know the time in American history where the country starts growing up, right? You know, it's it's like takes place in a, one evening of 1962 and you have this this collection of, of characters and back then it's it's kind of cool that you movies frequently just told the story of a character. You've never seen it. Oh, you have to. It's um it was a key inspiration for the old TV series Happy Days. Ron Howard actually stars in it with Cindy Williams and Richard Dreyfuss, Paul Lamat, oh Jeez, uh, <laughs> uh, just tons, tons of people. But it, it was so cool because what it did is it told multiple stories, right, of all these different characters that intertwined over the span of just one evening. And it was just, it's, it was so cool because that was such a novel concept back then, right? Movies just talked about a character and followed them, right? But this was this this tapestry of all these different characters, and a very young ha uh, Han, uh, Harrison Ford, Han Solo. Uh, he's he's in there too in a in a smaller role, uh, but it's just it is so cool because you have these characters that go through this evolutionary process, right? When the evening starts, it's the last night before the guys are gonna go off to college the next day, so they just really want to blow it out, right, for one final night, and to see how they, you know, one last time to experience what they've been through, but also to sort of embrace and sort of maybe even change their minds about where they're going, right? And it's just, it's, ah, it's such a great film. Um, yeah, tons of people in that thing. Um, uh, Wolfman Jack, you know, but yeah, if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. Um, so it's, let's see, I'll check it out sometime. Yeah, 
put on your list. It's, I mean, it is an older film, right? But I, I think it still holds up exceptionally well. Uh, there's still, it's kind of funny. There's some actors in there. Uh, I think it was much more uh, uh, frequent in the the films of the '70s, where you'd have some actors that would just be like amazingly atrocious right and it doesn't matter if I mean it's not like it was like you know like modern low budget films right you you see really really bad acting right but back then I mean like go back and watch like Jaws right and there's some I mean you have amazing performances Richard Dreyfuss you know and, uh, Roy Scheider and all the, those guys but uh, Robert Shaw but then you have some of these other background actors that only have like a line or two and it'd be like nails on chalkboard right you know, but the same thing for America Graffiti. There's a couple people in there, but by and large, it's just fantastic. But so they would they would do these uh, these filming sequences where it was so low budget. What they did was they had a car that would uh, drag the other car, right? And then what would happen is George Lucas would sit with the camera on his shoulder in the trunk of the car and shoot the other car, and the people would do the dialogue, and they would just drive up and down the street, you know, until he finally just said cut, right? You know, and they had one where they kept doing the scene over and over, and they were getting no direction from George Lucas, and they were just they kept doing it. And they finally just said, you know, let's let's stop. And they pull over, and they go up to confront him to say, you know, what's going on, right? And they went over to the trunk, and he had fallen asleep. <laughs> so I mean, George Lucas like curled up in the trunk of the car with the camera, and they're just doing lines for no reason at that point, not realizing that he had fallen asleep on him. But uh, it it is. It's just it's a personal favorite of mine. Mm hmm. Yep. <laughs> he knew it. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Absolutely dig it up. It, it is such a, a, a sweet film. And, uh, actually, one of the first films to have, like, wall to wall music, too. I mean, the soundtrack is fantastic. It's in my, my personal collection. And it's just, there's so many, uh, I mean, the songs of the era, right? But, um, yeah. So. You know, when we talk about Lucas, actually, that's still to this day. That's that's my own personal favorite film. I just I think that was such a sweet film. How about you? How about a favorite film? You gotta have, uh, if not a favorite, at least a couple that you know are your go tos. Adding it to my weekend. Got a long weekend this week. Sweet, nice. There you go. Yeah, I'd be I'd be very curious to see what you say afterwards. Um, it just. Like I said, the fun thing about it is watching the characters, like, incredible evolution of the characters in just one night, but believably so. Man, that's so hard. Yeah, I know. I know. I mean, yeah. It's it's funny because I'll, like, when I get asked, you know, what are your, like, top three or top five films, it kind of depends on what I'm thinking of at the moment. Yeah. Future is definitely up there. I agree. You know, I, I agree. Uh, it's just... You know, and I, I don't know if it's just because I have a nostalgia for the time period, you know, but there's just so many films in the eighties. I mean I mean just in that same just in that same time span, right? Just like within a year, you have Back to the Future, uh, Ghostbusters, and and the greatest Christmas movie of all time, which anyone that says is not a Christmas movie, they're wrong. And that is Die Hard. Die Hard is the greatest Christmas movie of all time. You know, but I mean, th all those, all three of those films were like within one year of each other. It's just such an amazing, uh, just coincidence that I mean, just true classics, you know. But uh, <laughs> yeah, John McCain and, and you know Hans Hans Gruber, the all-time greatest. Alan Rickman, the all-time great villain from Die Hard. You know, just such a perfect film. Home Alone is also my top movie list. I love that movie. I really do. Yeah, um, that's it, it. Just that is such a sweet film. I mean, it it never should have been as good as it was. You know, I mean, there's just everything really clicked for it. You know, I mean, just it's one of those things that could have like slid into like the depressing, morose kind of the kid is stuck and how's he gonna survive, or it could slide into the whole like Three Stooges style physical comedy. And either one of those can just send it spiraling out, but I mean, it just blends it so perfectly, um, and it's I mean, yeah, absolutely. It's one of the Zeitgeist movies that just got everything right. Yeah, you're you're so right, and never gets old. I I agree, you know. 
<laughs> it's just uh yeah and then um speaking of Macaulay Culkin too uh the earlier film for him was Uncle Buck uh oh don't get me started on John Hughes oh my John Hughes movies man John Hughes was just he was so amazing god what a loss you know but I mean like Uncle Buck <laughs> National Lampoon Christmas Vacation really interesting yeah, that cat had nine lives, and he used all of them up right there. <laughs> that is a fun one. Yeah, I like that. I'm not sure. Uh, let's see. Out of the out of the series, I'm not sure which one would be my favorite. I, to be honest, I have not watched the Lampoon movies in quite a while. Um, my Girl was a favorite of mine as a kid. Oh, so we got a Macaulay Culkin theme going here, don't we? Oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, very sweet film. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, so I was talking about Uncle Buck, though. I mean, that was, you know, he was such a precocious little kid. I mean, it just, it was, like, so perfect in that film. And John Candy. I was in love with... Vada? Huh? Wait, wait, wait. Oh, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 Chomsky. Uh, oh shoot, I'm blanking on her name. Um, yeah, she was. I just saw her in something recently, didn't I? Um, what did I just see? I, I, I saw her. All right. I, okay, now it's bugging me. I know. I just. I gotta look it up. I should remember this, but I'm tired. That's my excuse. I'm just tired. What did I just see her in recently? Anna Chums uh Anna yeah Chlumsky. Um Halt and Catch Fire. There you go. It was Halt and Catch Fire. That was a oh, I love that series. That was another one that was so cool. It's kind of the the birth of the PC, told in a fictional way, but like wrapped in like true history. That was good. I can't think of my absolute top movie. It's so mood dependent. You know, I agree. You know, I mean, I, I settled on the American Graffiti as my personal favorite ages ago. But, I mean, you know, I mean, it, it kind of depends on what pops in my head, I think, too. I mean, I could, like, go look at my DVD collection and go, oh, yeah, no, th this is in the top five. Oh, no, wait, no, this is in the top five. And then I suddenly have 30 movies that are in my top five. <laughs> you know, um... I mean, it just uh, uh, Whiplash, La La Land, and Interstellar. Okay, I'll give you the first two. Uh, Whiplash, man, when he's on that stage and he calls him out. Oh wow, yeah, fantastic movie. La La Land was just so perfect. I watched that movie and I I was like so obsessed trying to figure out how they shot. The uh, um, yeah, Whiplash is a masterpiece. I yeah, I agree. I agree. J.K. Yeah, but uh, J.K. Simmons, man, he is he automatically when he's in a movie that gets a couple stars right there. Um, a bit weaker, but I'm with it. What I was trying to when it's the first time I saw it, right? When they're doing that that dance number, uh, when they're up uh, by the Griffith Observatory, right? And I'm trying to figure out because they have like this beautiful twilight sun in the background, right? It's just the golden hour, right? And I'm going, you can't shoot an entire dance number in that time frame, right? So I'm trying to figure out how they, and I'm going, okay, they probably shot this green screen, right? And composite it later, but the camera's moving around so much, and I can't, in another low budget, and I'm like doing the math, it's like, how do they do it, you know? So then I, I, I had to go look it up. How do they do it? They did it the old school way. They waited until the sun was almost down, and they said, hurry, let's go do it. And they would get, like, one or two tries before they lost the sun. And it's just the fact that they did that in true old-school fashion with, honest to God, golden hour, you know. And it's like, you know, they had to be ready, you know, because the sun wasn't going to wait on them. So they did it legitimately, right? And I just – to this day, you go back and watch that shot again, and you realize – I mean, there's no retakes, right? I mean, if they mess it up, they flub it. You know, and it's a long shot. 
that whole dance thing goes on for forever, right? I mean, the camera's got to be choreographed perfectly. They have to hit perfectly. They can't mess anything up, right? And it's just, I mean, incredible respect for how they pull that off. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I agree. It's not a, it's not a perfect film. Um, I, I like the way it plays out. But, um, uh, no, it takes me serious when I say that La La Land was a top movie. Yeah, I mean it's you know, I I I think that um, let's see, they all just talk it down as rom com or something. No, no, I think it's definitely totally more than that. I, I a rom com is where you have everything in perfectly like a typical Sandra Bullock movie, right? Something like uh, uh while you were sleeping, right? You know, I mean that's to me, oh, that's a rom com, right? But La La Land is much more like something like, uh, oh, I'll tell you a fantastic movie. This is one that's, I, I still have it on Laserdisc. I still have a laser, I, I have a couple hundred movies on Laserdisc. That's how stupid I am. Um, the, uh, the, uh, the Fabulous Baker Boys. That, that is a movie. that Kind of like um, uh, La La Land, right? It, it involves music, right? It involves a, a uh, like an, a romance on the edge of happening, right? But you have uh, uh, Jeff Bridges and Bo Bridges playing brothers that are musicians, and they realize that uh, they just play dueling pianos kind of thing, but their act is sort of, like, stagnating. So they decide they have to bring on a female singer to uh, to spice things up, to uh, up their bookings, and they get Michelle Pfeiffer. Well, Jeff Bridges is, you know, just a total, uh, you know, just a, you know, total womanizer. So Boba just has to like play constant, you know, divider, right? He has to keep them separated because he knows if they hook up, then Jeff will ruin it because he always does, right? And so it's just it's a really well told story. I mean it's you know, it's funny in all the right places, but it's not it's not a light comedy at all. But it's just I think it's such a beautifully told film. Um let's see. It's a love story to creativity and craft. It's not really about two people's love story. I think most people assume it's the latter. Yeah. No, but it's, it's funny. So the more I think about it, the more I, I would say if you ever get a chance to watch Fabulous Baker uh, – Baker, Fabulous Baker Boys, <laughs> sorry, um, you would actually kind of see a lot of parallels, a lot of parallels between that and La La Land. Um you know, where you have the, the the frustrated musician that just really wants to, you know, play the blues and, you know, just to have this other life, you know. But, uh, you know, and it's just, I mean, this, this idealistic, romantic kind of story. But, you know, checking it out too. Good. Yeah. Just um, Michelle Pfeiffer, Red Dress, um, singing the song Making Whoopi. Uh, that is just like filmmaking at its finest, right? It is just such, it is a scene that works on five different levels, and they the film knows it, right? And that's why that scene is so brilliant, you know? No spoilers, no context, but it's just, it, it works so well. Michelle Pfeiffer. Uh, she was my cougar, <laughs> cougar crush as a kid. Oh man, yeah. If you want to see a a teenage Michelle Pfeiffer, um, uh, uh, what is it called? Um, uh, Hollywood Nights, Hollywood Nights, which was okay. Once again, I mentioned American Graffiti. Uh, Hollywood Nights was sort of the ripoff because American Graffiti, uh, at the time, held the record for the most money a movie made versus how much it cost to actually make. Uh, it had this insane success, which is one of the key reasons why he got to do Star Wars because he had a movie that was so successful. So Hollywood Nights was a total ripoff, but it's kind of funny that Michelle Pfeiffer, a very very young Michelle Pfeiffer, and it uh, she's a, a roller girl uh, waitress, and her boyfriend is Tony Danza, a very young Tony Danza, uh, which is kind of an odd pairing if you think about the two of them together, but. Um, I'm not necessarily recommending that one. Uh, that one's just um, Hollywood Nights is much more uh, bordering on like the Porky's kind of level, even though it predates uh, Porky's. Yeah, 
Yeah, Tony Danza. You know, I, I, I thought Tony was really good in that one TV series. You know, the one that he played the character named uh, Tony? <laughs> she ever noticed that? I, I always thought they had to do that just because whenever they gave Tony a, like a character name, he, you know, he would never answer, you know. But, I mean, you look at Taxi, his character name was Tony, right? You look at uh, uh, Who's the Boss? Tony. And then he had a TV series named Tony. So, <laughs> you know, there's a theme in there. A-O, O-A, A-O, O-A. <laughs> yep, who's the boss? Yeah, in that, I, yeah, I said who's the boss, didn't I? I don't think I messed that up, but... Oh, yeah. So, uh, speaking of who's the boss, actually, I got to watch a taping of that back in the day. I actually got to sit down and, um, yeah, that was a million years ago. Uh, did you see Community? Uh, I didn't. Um, I, I watched a couple episodes, um, but I never really kind of plugged into that one as much. Uh, was to Did Tony Danza end up in Community at some point? I'm full of Hollywood stories. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> but yeah, that was my that was my great 1985 trip. You know, the one where I came out and you know kind of had that that Marty McFly bump in. Uh, that was that same one. Uh, it, it takes a bit to pick up. Yeah, um, yeah, it's I I yeah I know it's it's one of those ones that um, I I don't actually have television, so I mean it's. Um, I, I don't think I really had a chance to, to uh, watch it proper. Uh, one of the characters in there has a theory on who's the boss. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> Interesting. So, um, okay, so th the theory is, uh, what, that Tony's actually like a, a brilliant rich guy. He just does it for kicks. All right, now I'm curious. Yeah, I'm not sure. How could I actually watch? I'm not even sure if uh, Community is on. Uh, well, it might be on Hulu or something, which, oops, sorry about the mic there. Uh, Hulu is like the one that I don't actually have right now. I have Netflix and Amazon, but uh, can't spot. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Hey, well, if you're going to hunt down American Graffiti and... Uh, it's been Dan Harmon. Okay, you want your okay. okay we, do we want more uh, random trivia? So, Dan Harmon, actually, um, uh, yeah, the first four seasons are. So, <clears throat> Dan Harmon actually, this is back when I was working at Digital Domain a million years ago. Uh, at this point, what have like early two thousand? Uh, he and some friends created uh, something here in Hollywood called Channel One Hundred One. And what they would do is every month, people would go off and make short films. And then they'd bring them in, and they'd screen them. And the audience would be like the Nielsen rating, right? And the people that liked uh, the the episodes, they would vote for it, and the, the show would get renewed for the next month. And the ones that didn't get canceled. And uh, they they had one breakout hit, one that was actually called Yacht Rock. And it was just so hysterical. It just it it features like the music of the the late seventies, early eighties. You know, like Kenny Loggins, Doobie Brothers, uh, some Eagles, uh, Hollow Notes, and that kind of stuff. And it just uh, Dan's all over it. Uh, there's a uh, a bunch of other characters, and then um, it has like these cameos that would come up occasionally. You'd have like um, oh. Um, Oh, uh, Sarah Silverman was in an episode or two, and then um, Drew Carey was in there, you know. But uh, yeah, actually, I think if you, uh, I think you could find it. Um, but it, I don't know if they actually coined the phrase or if it was around before. But it just it it kind of caught on after that. So yeah, rock. Let's see. Yeah, <laughs> so there's, yeah, it's on, uh, <laughs> it, there he goes, it's, oh, here's the proper, oh, is that, web show, oh, now they're doing more, okay, I was just trying to find the, so, 
I mean, it, it, it's it's some super funny stuff. Um, I think he actually did like um, Seinfeld story. While we're at it, uh, <laughs> comedians. Where's my Seinfeld story? Um, let's see. Well, Jerry and I went to school together. Okay, no, now I'm just completely making stuff up. No. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I actually have a Seinfeld story. Um, mm -mm. Nope, I don't think I actually have any connection there. Um, I could tell you tons of stuff about Julie Louise Dreyfus when she used to be on Saturday Night Live a million years ago. But, um, nope, I have no personal Seinfeld stories. Nope. Got nothing. I actually wasn't a... I, I, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I failed you. That's it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Julie Louise Dreyfus. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny because when she was on Saturday, Saturday Night Live, she was so young, and she had all these uh, sketches with... Uh, uh, who was it? Uh, Gary Kroger was her co-star. And they always had this chemistry and I just always kind of assumed that those two were together but in reality it was actually another cast member Brad Hall who went on to produce a bunch of the, the TV shows and stuff later on but um, uh, she uh, said Amy Poehler and Tina Fey are my favorite female comedians <laughs> excuse me well, I'm a bit older, so I guess I would probably steer towards some of the the previous ones. But uh, yeah, I mean they're yeah, I mean total kudos to to Tina Fey too. I mean you know she she did a fantastic job of uh, you know taking her experience on SNL and and wrapping it up into a whole new show. So major kudos to her for that for sure. But um, yeah, there was one. Um, with um, Julie Louis Dreyfus and Gary Kroger, where they play, it, it's like a a Donnie and Marie Christmas special, and they're Donnie and Marie, and then they're singing, and they 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 start like singing closer together, and next thing you know, they start like making out. <laughs> it's it's just it's wrong. It's just so terribly wrong, but it was really funny. But yeah, she was on there for a bunch of years, but super funny. Uh. Oh wow! Is it ten? Oh, it's ten forty. I probably should wind down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, you know what? Sorry, it wasn't Donnie. It was actually uh, Eddie Murphy doing the uh, Gumby Christmas special. That's what it was. That I could probably even find a still of, if I could find. Let's see. Yeah, yeah. I should pack it in. All right. I'll do this one last thing, Eddie. Murphy. Uh, did I spell that right? Uh, oops. Gummy Christmas special. Oh, they even had the video up there. So, <laughs> there you go. Uh, Christmas special. Donnie and Marie. Yeah, there, <laughs> there they are. Gary Kroger and a very young Julie Louis Dreyfus. Looking forward to my. Ex well, thank you, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Yeah, I'll wind down here. I'm way past my time, anyways. But uh, like I said, I, I I'm gonna miss Wednesday because I will be flying, but I will be back at it on Friday. So uh, we'll check out American Graffiti. Please do. I'm curious to hear what you think. Um, personal favorite, but don't let that bias you. You know, if you think it sucks, y you can. Okay, don't tell me it sucks. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No, if you don't like it, that's fine. I mean, you know, there's no right or wrong answer. It's personal opinion, even though it's a fantastic film. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, thanks for hanging out with me again, and I will uh, be back on Friday. All right? So uh, have a good couple of days, and I will see you on Friday. So everyone else, thanks so much for hanging out, and I will talk to you people soon. All right? Uh, uh, oh yeah, Julie. Oh, that's right. And uh, oh, that's right. Christmas vacation. She's the neighbor. She is the the nosy neighbor. That's right. I forgot about that. She's the yuppie neighbor. <laughs> All right. Cheers. Take care. 
Everyone take care, and I will see you guys on Friday, all right? All right, take care. Adios.